August 7th, St. Cajetan, founder of the Theatine Order. St. Cajetan was born in the year 1487 in Lombardy of noble and pious parents. Immediately after his baptism, his mother consecrated him to the Blessed Virgin, humbly begging her to guard him and take his spiritual welfare under her motherly protection. His entire life proved how effectual his mother's prayers had been. His whole conduct was such that even in childhood he was called a saint. He afterwards went to the university and always made it his greatest care to preserve his innocence unspotted among so many temptations. Having received at Padua the degree of civil and canon laws, he repaired to Rome where he was ordained priest and preferred by Pope Julius II to a high ecclesiastical position. After the death of the Pope, he resigned his post and returned to his home desiring to work more effectually for the salvation of souls. He served the sick in and out of the hospitals with untiring charity. His principal aim was to save souls. The sick he persuaded by kind and gentle exhortations, and others he moved to virtue by his earnest sermons. The popular saying was that Cajetan looked like a seraph when standing before the altar, and like an apostle when in the pulpit. His devotion when he said Mass was equaled by his fervor and zeal while preaching. After some time he went again to Rome, where, inspired by God and with the cooperation of three other pious and learned men, he founded the Theatine Order for such priests that desired to live an apostolic life to reform the negligence of the clergy and the corrupt morals of the people of the world, to observe carefully the sacred ceremonies of the church, restore the observance of pious conduct in the temples dedicated to the worship of the Most High, to labor in opposition to heretics, assist the sick and dying, and, in a word, to promote the welfare of men to the best of their ability. He imposed a special obligation on the members in regard to the vow of poverty. They were not only forbidden to have annual revenues, but even to ask alms. They had to leave their whole care of their sustenance to God. From Rome, the holy founder traveled to Naples. This city had to thank the vigilance of this saint under God for its preservation from heresy. For several disciples of Luther, who at the time disseminated his poisonous doctrines in Germany, had come and began privately as well as publicly to maintain, under the name of evangelical liberty, the teachings of Luther. When St. Cajetan was informed of this, he preached so zealously against the new heresy that the inhabitants of the city were preserved in the true faith. This holy man was exceedingly severe toward himself. Almost daily he scourged himself mercilessly. In partaking of nourishment he was so temperate that his life might justly be called a continual fast. It is not surprising that God bestowed on him many graces. One Christmas Eve, when he was passing the night in the church of St. Mary Major, the Holy Child appeared to him, and the Blessed Virgin, who carried him, laid him into the saint's arms, filling his soul with heavenly consolation. The holy man had many other visions during his life, and was often seen in a state of ecstasy during his prayers. He possessed the gift of prophecy and miraculously cured many sick. In Naples, he also found strife in the city civil as well as ecclesiastical so much so that a revolt was feared and neither the exhortations and persuasions of saint cajian nor the other men were of any avail the holy man was deeply distressed at the danger facing so many souls hence he offered his life as a sacrifice to appease the wrath of the almighty praying that god would accept it soon after the saint had offered himself to heaven he became dangerously sick and repeating his offer died a most peaceful and holy death. In his last hour he would not allow his body any comfort, adding, There is no road leading to heaven but that of innocence or repentance. He who has departed from the first must take the second, else he is eternally lost. He received the last sacraments with great devotion, turned his eyes toward heaven, and rendered up his soul in tranquility to God. In the year 1547, the strife in the city soon after ceased, and peace was restored as if God had wished to show that he had accepted the life of St. Cajetan as a peace offering for the salvation of innumerable souls. What is the lesson for us? asked Professor Plino. 
Divine providence always calls someone to counterattack the evil that is afflicting the church and Christendom. Today, the great scourge chastising the church is the revolution. The revolution in the church is called progressivism or modernism. In the temporal sphere, it is also called communism, self-managing socialism, and tribalism. Therefore, there should be some Catholics who are specially called to take the counter-revolution to its furthest limits. We are called to be these Catholics. What does it mean? It means to have a great love for the spirit of the hierarchy, discipline, and order. To love the order that God put in the universe, which is, at the same time, unified and diverse in a way that expresses his infinite perfection. This spirit should be taken to its furthest limits, just as St. Cajetan brought poverty to its unimaginable limits.